slowly getting back into our seats. talking about um, how do we do this? How do we break barriers and live together and apart when and if we want to? How do we make spaces for our own, to go with family like Obey was talking about and do family dance. Mm -hmm. And how do you break the heck out of that sometimes? As much as you can or for as long as you can. And then step back in. And how do you find other spaces to enter and other families to enter? But there's another space, and that's the space where no one is. That space where you're not restricted around culture and politics and story. Mm -hmm. The Empty Space, mm -hmm. Hugo's lovely book, um, his name. And I think that's a theater space, the space where you can enter and make something that you didn't know before you got there. And that's the work that I thought about doing in going to different communities with questions and opening dialogue, and sometimes making plays, mm -hmm. and creating forms. And the latest one was here in Boston, uh -huh. uh, with the Boston Busing Desegregation Project. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and Paul Elliott. And uh, you know I'm going to call you the other night. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, I know. <laughs> That's the group. And um, what are you talking about? Oh, I am so full. I, I couldn't come yesterday because I was at a retreat. Um, of facilitators, and um, I learned so much at that retreat. And I have to say, I talked to Robbie before I went to the retreat for the first time since she left Boston. And I realized that I have been grieving 
Robbie's leaving Boston. And for parts of, the, of, this, of, of this today, I didn't think I could do this without crying. So if I start crying, it's okay. But I just realized, hearing her voice, that when she said she was leaving, I thought, this is the right thing because of some of the health challenges. And I just said, go. And I didn't know what a deep deep loss it was. Mm. It wasn't a loss. So at the um at the um at the well I taught we talked for a really long time. We talked so long that we couldn't get together for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but um, it goes back to what Dago was saying. So much, and I, we put up this picture. This was our very first story circle that Robbie brought story circles to us. She had us over here at Emerson doing things, and um, and and and, the, and this was our first story circle. And the the Boston Bus and Desegregation Project was so much about grieving and the refusal to grieve. Mm. And um, at, the, at the workshop, they, they, um, some, at the workshop I was at, the retreat I was at, one of the leaders said that, talked about leadership as stepping across a threshold into the unknown. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, it's not management, it's not so many things that get confused with it, and you don't know, need somebody else to do, to do it with you. It is stepping across that leadership. And I thought, that is Robbie. That mm -hmm. threshold, that is Robbie. That's the work. Um, and that's what was, to me, the most important thing about our, um, our project, is that, you know, if you look at how, how, how deep people were into talking about what that had meant to them, you know, it, it's it's just so it's just it was just so the deepest moments were for me the the most important and um, finding ways to bring the the art of conversation of of sharing of storytelling into a space like Robbie was able to do was so much the soul of the project. And, uh, and I, because I marveled at first when I saw her, it's just how she would listen and make that space for people to speak on things that they, they said. We, we were told not to talk about this, or, you know, I, I've never said this before, or whatever, but the, the whole thing was making that space available. So I have so many things that have come up because I just can't, can't tell you how much Robbie how much she brought her leadership and um, and to to the project and to to our to, well let me speak for instance to my individual life. So even when she left and I said I didn't know I was grieving, now I'm getting some 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 a, 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 some clarity about it, like you do with grief. And one thing was that um, at, at, it was a part of an understanding that the work I wasn't doing isn't the work I do need to do right now. And I think that a lot of times that, um, that, that, that stepping into the unknown is, 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 is saying that. And what I think Robbie does is help you to do that. And it, so I'll just close with another quote it really has always guided my, my work by a man named Will Keeper, who I haven't seen since he said this. But he said that in a time of a dying culture, our work is to be hospice workers to what's dying mm -hmm. and midwives to what's being born. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. And that, that has always stuck with me. And to me, that is the essence of Robbie's work. Mm. She has midwifed us, 
and she has helped us let things die that needed to die. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she was so wise. Mm. Uh, mm. Paula Paula goes back because another project that I did was called Turf. Boston Busing is about that subject. And what was it, 97? 96, 97. We did a project <coughs> on the well known, infamous um, history. Uh, in Boston that no one was talking about. Outside of Boston, everyone knew about that. The contemporary um, school children and everyone never talked about it. And as, as you talk about the school children didn't know about it, um, and still really don't know about it because it's not part of the formal, at least in BPS, it's not part of the formal curriculum. Um, uh, other sites of activism, so-called activism and efforts to integrate and so forth are part of the curriculum for cities outside of Boston, but not in Boston. So it was another so the structural way of containing that story and reifying the one that was sort of presented as the, the model. Um, I, I, I think in terms of the, um, the impact for me for turf, um, sometimes I'll quickly say it just, it, I was doing my doctorate out at UMass Amherst, so it added a year to my doctoral process because I had a chance to, I just couldn't resist it. I had a chance to listen to people tell stories about race and class, which is part of some of my work, and um, be introduced to theater. I was a singer. I, I had no frame around thinking about the theater in um, however I defined it. It wasn't part of my, my trajectory. Um, so my, my gratitude to Robbie starts right there. It's sort of opening up that pathway for me. Um, the, I'm really having a hard time thinking how even how to sort of lock concisely talk about this this because this whole experience this particular conversation because this has been so rich. Mm -hmm. It's I, I'm I'm so filled. Donna was asking if when it wanted to go see Get Out. If she wants to see it again. I haven't seen it. <laughs> but but you know, I had already planned. I just need to go home and just sit. <laughs> I cannot take it out right now. But, so please forgive me because I'm I'm really trying to sort of lock into this particular moment um, uh, because now being here, um, um, filled with all that's transpired and um, the, the love is is is. Is, is still circulating. Um, but I guess the, we try one other thing here, that, that TERF gave us a chance to hear stories and to think about our own story, which is obviously very connected to so much of what's been talked about. Um, you know, I had to, I had a chance to voice particular memories of my grandmother. Um, you know, all your slave, all your family weren't slaves. They were businessmen and doctor, you know, this kind of thing. And you know, that always sort of messed with me about this bougie kind of thing she was holding up. Um, I remember Tom talking about going to see cows. Tom was one of the other actors, and uh, and he was from South Boston, and and I just I still remember the preciousness of his words when he talked about going to see cows for the first time. Mm -hmm. So there are these moments, these, 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 these feelings and connections to 
to that experience that is still, um, is that not 20 years? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and, and also, the turf um, also laid the groundwork about the importance of story, mm -hmm. of others, of your own story. And I don't think I had ever gotten that message as clearly before. I mean, you know, other than sort of a family, you know, your family histories. But but the, so the that which has been talked again about so much here for me was introduced by Robbie in the turf experience and then amplified through the Boston Busing Desegregation Project. Um, Donna and I had known each other um, for many, many years since we first came. We both were around VU in 1973 when we mm -hmm. came to Boston. And, uh, and, uh, but we hadn't really had a chance to really directly connect. There was something we knew we liked about each other and sort of respected and so forth. Mm -hmm. so, as the director of the program, she had come to see me um, and wanted me to be involved, and and I just got really hooked. I just got really hooked because it was this way: of, we need to get these stories out because we know that that this history around what we were referring to as busing, which we became, which we also wanted to reframe to say the desegregation, because it was the Boston Busing Desegregation Project, because we kept hearing stories about how much people, especially in Roxbury, were saying, this wasn't about busing, busing was a strategy. And, and, you know, and it didn't start with busing, it didn't end with busing, it's not paying attention to this long legacy of activism within the black community. Um, so um, the, the idea of that particular era was reframed as a result of the stories that were collected. Um, through Robbie's influence and through the, the real purpose of the project. There was such a complementary nature to Robbie's gifts and the, the, the initial framing of the, of the project, which was truth, learning, and change. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was taken from a, a, model, a reconciliation model, actually, the, the, the people that funded it. We're really working on reconciliation, and, and as Donna was moving this, and the people that she started to pull together around it, we, we realized that it was um, we weren't looking for rec reconciliation at that point. We weren't ready for reconciliation. We really t to hear more of these truths that had been buried or dismissed um, under the guise of, well, we already know the history because didn't you read Common Ground? Mm -hmm. We heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. Didn't you read Common Ground? Did you? Yeah. So, so, so this reframing—the power of reframing that that bigger story mm -hmm. through these personal stories—became. Um, um, I don't want to just trivialize and call it a device, mm -hmm. but it became um, really um, integral to some of the work that how I saw myself and my own future <coughs> work and my work with teachers, because I'm sort of known in teacher education, working in teachers, around issues of race and class and culture and all that fun stuff. So, mm -hmm. so um, but that, I think, I, I'm trying to connect the dots about the power of Robbie's influence um, and the, um, as an individual and in the community that you brought together, too. Um, Regina's not here, but she was going to be here. Um, uh, but you know, there was this, this being a, a member of a cast, a group of people coming together became very special, and I still have very fond memories of those of those moments. Even just just remembering the way Tom said cows, mm -hmm. I, I, and when I see cows, I, you know, <laughs> and there were cows. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, it something just. <laughs> so, so, so I guess it's the storytelling, it's the community, um, and the, the loving nature in which we all interacted, and the affirmation of the, the power of our stories, whatever those stories were, because it certainly was bringing up, I said, some contradictions in my life around the race class stuff. Um, and then it, it's extended into the Boston Bus and Decent Project. And Nancy, you want to share some of your your thoughts on that? Um, 
I came late to the project, and the story circles were pretty much, um, and most of the story circles were wrapping up, like there were other things going on, and and I was just volunteering in the office to help out in, an, in any way. Um, and, uh, and then we started, we, we had come up with these seven questions, seven lessons from all these story circles and interviews and all the conversations. And, um, and we were going into this new thing that was, it was hard to explain exactly, but, um, called race and class talk about. So that was this idea that, of having conversations that were um, like based on those less questions and lessons. Um, I'm sure someone else can explain it better. <laughs> anyway, so I was just, uh, that's how I got to know Robbie was because Robbie was involved with those talk abouts. And, and so we would, the big thing is that we would get together to have these co conversations among ourselves about what we were going to do at the talk about. And um, that was really, a great experience of them. Um, well, for me, it became that third space. Mm -hmm. It became um, a theater mm -hmm. event. And we decided to add an audience mm -hmm. to our talking about. And Donna brought up mainly we were talking about race and we had that conversation that was similar uh, to, to one um, that you know I've been overhearing today about um, is it race is it class if you talk about class are you dismissing race or whatever and Donna came up with we need in this country race and class literacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we brought up how hard it was to talk about class. And we haven't really quite <laughs> gotten to, to an easy talk about in terms of class. But we did a, a significant theatrical event at um, Sister Mary's church <coughs> in Roxbury. And, um, and we had a, a theatrical, mm -hmm. partly improvised, <coughs> partly retelling some of the stories that we told each other, improvisation <coughs> and dialogue and including the audience. And I remember one moment of talk about when Nancy looked up and, and stood up, I think. She stood up and said, now you talk. <laughs> <laughs> She's got it. <laughs> um, I, go ahead. Can I read something that should in the room? Yeah. Paulina was another um, person who did the she talk about. The, was the, um, uh, the we have two other people who are very involved. Joan and Trina were very involved at different times in BBDT. Mm -hmm. uh, but what Cardina, Cardina was one of the talk about people. She wrote, and she had to leave. Mm -hmm. um, she said, I'm sorry I could not be here, Robbie, to speak to you as part of the talk about group about your contribution to guiding us in this process of, co of collective learning and storytelling and performance to address systemic racism and class literacy. I can't entirely capture the wholeness or expanse of it. One of the things I have received from you is your presence and beingness connected to the practice of whole body listening. I was talking to a member of our group about the calm and stillness of your presence. Just being in the flow of the moment, paying attention to your own, to your, to your own, to your own and others' feelings and what's happening in the space. I'm an impatient, she underlined that, <laughs> person. So I want to get where we want to go or trying to go quickly. 
you have taught me you have taught you you've taught me you model and modeled for me being present and listening closely and generously may be slower but we will learn so much more from each other and create and carry a richer bag of goodies <laughs> better than we could have imagined when we arrived where we are, and she put it in quotation marks, where we are going. Donna also gave me the concept or the possibility of community education outside of established institutions of education and how those things connect was something that many of us have talked about for years. Mm -hmm. College, community, and arts. And in many awkward ways, we're doing that. But the idea of calling it community education um, is something for me that's very rich because we tend to think of education as having levels mm -hmm. and then when you get to the highest level you get the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know everything. <laughs> that's when learning starts. I mean, I'm retired, so that's <laughs> this is my highest learning point. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, um, so the idea of continual learning. Uh, is yeah, I feel. I I just so agree. With, I'm sorry, Paul. Oh, I, I so agree with what, what you're saying because um, the other thing I, that that I that I love about Robbie is that she connects. And, and this is what we do looking at systemic racism or systemic oppression at any point. She connects what's going on with you, with what's going on with your in relationships, with what's going on with the institutions we connect, but she, with the larger global system. But she does that, just, she just lives that. So, um, so uh, we had, when we were talking the other day, and, she, and so, and I, I think like that too, not in an artistic way, but in my work, I think like that. And so, it's like Robbie you can talk about something that a lot of times people don't talk about. So, for example, you know, from doing anti racism work, which I do a lot and had, had done before the election a lot in very white spaces in northern New England. I, I knew Donald Trump was going. I just never. I just knew it, and I and I everybody would say, "Oh, he's not going to win." I say, "Really? You really think it's like?" So I sort of taught myself on what I was feeling inside and seeing in the world. I was like, "Okay," and Robbie won't let you do that. So when he won, <laughs> so when he won, I I was so happy to get a letter back from the same retreat where I written to myself and said. I hope I'm not right, because <laughs> it's like again. I think it's something that you, that you teach to to just go with the, with where you are, even if it's getting embarrassed and crying off your st off the stage or whatever. <laughs> so you know, and and so that was a big part of it. But this whole grief thing that that David brought up and that we've sort of been talking about. So I was talking to Robbie the other day, and, and she said, she was telling me about this article she read in the New Yorker. I don't know if people have seen this, but it's about these billionaires who are investing all this money into living forever. Yeah. It's, 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 it's mind boggling. And again, it's that place of what we'll do to avoid grief and loss and death and dying. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and birth, and, and you know, you can't, you, it's, you need birth. It's like, you know, it's like something we gotta come to, to, to terms with. But, you know, that's it. Robbie will wear any place with you. 
I, I, that was a bit much with that <laughs> article because I couldn't put it down, but I was like, oh, this is weirder than I ever thought. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just want to just I think I'm I'm thinking too about the 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 synergy of Robbie's relationship with this project. Um, the you know like so it's truth, learning, and change. Truth, learning, being a, 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 a lifelong learner. Uh, we were uh, so that so that was part of the sort of the, the language. And the vision of the project initially. Um, and so I'm seeing connections in terms of this particular artist's um, way of being in the world that is so complementary to that. Um, uh, we were in the, uh, and I don't know, Kardina would appreciate this, being at the Learning Network. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, because there was, a, there was a, a bunch of us that we, we had our little subcommittee assignments, right? So. This was the, lear the learning network. And our work was to, to think about ways that, um, that people could take, could engage in the, the stories that initially actually was part of a video that had been made, interviewing some people that had been involved in the, the, uh, on the buses or driving the buses, and so forth. Um, and as a, as, a, as a catalyst for these, <coughs> ultimately, these, these story circles. Um, but we really wanted to think about the learning process <coughs> for people and, and making some assumptions about how people um, that had been schooled to think of themselves as repositories of information from onside, outside. Um, and, this, and so so we had these very animated conversations among us around this belief about um, uh, drawing on your own experience, bringing your own stories to it, so again, it was it was it was very much um, a complementary synergy to to the way Robbie walks in the world and the way we were sort of structuring ourselves. Um, and then as we changed the structure of the project in sort of the standing committees and this executive overriding committee and so forth, um, we dismantled those particular uh, committees. But the the, the the passion that was held among the folks that were involved in this learning network group really still would pop up in conversations over time. Um, and uh, see, we're, we're back to the learning network. We still, we, you know, it was sort of validation about the importance of the work, the, the rightness of the work. And again, the, I, I'm, I'm again trying to make connections to the way Robbie walks in the world and the, the, the synergy with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess I just want to sort of throw out the point that Charlotte <coughs> was posing, wherever she is, um, Charlotte was posing about, how, in, in, in other comments, about how we sort of have to do it for ourselves, how we hold ourselves accountable, mm -hmm. how we create our own, our own um, 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 relationships, mm -hmm. organizational relationships to bring forth the work that has integrity and is, is honest. Um, and so I'm, I'm also feeling like something in the relationship that, that the way this sustained, this, this extended relationship sustained itself over the years with, with all of the activity that you were doing, you were in and out and, and so forth, but there was always this sense of connection with Robbie about that we, that we felt and we knew she felt. So there's something I think that could be explored too about how do you, how do artists find those parents mm -hmm. um, 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 that are mutually satisfying, mutually enriching, um, and I'd like to think that there there might be some other things that we could talk about that that might sort of pull some of that up, some of those possibilities up for others. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Uh, a lot of this has to do with where you are, mm -hmm. where you go, mm -hmm. and um, there's um, there are different points of view in in community theater, in the teaching of it, in the practice of it, uh, about going to a place and staying there going as a catalyst 
which I would prefer to be called if that is worthwhile, understanding the limitations mm -hmm. of that. Um, being in the place that you're from, or as many students that I've had uh, have come to learn more about the principles and go back home uh, to introduce and help change. Um, and since I have chosen in my circumstances to move around, I feel like the work for me has to be catalytic. Although, when I was here, I thought I was going to be here. Um, and so I, I felt so much more bonded um, and then, you know, uh, and as I say, we still are. With Marshall and with with EPDP, uh, um, I feel you know some kind of long distance relationship. Oh, the circle is unbroken, and oh, it is truly unbroken. And the thing unbroken. is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's like unless New York, it's like it's, it's a little ways away. But it was it was that there was something else. And then you have to go through that process to know that you haven't lost you haven't, you you have lost something, mm -hmm. but that's not the biggest. Thing. <laughs> and I and I and I think and I, and I think too just the way that you are so conscious and intentional about what you do, about where you put your energy, and you know sometimes it might mean that you have to move here or there that movement thing that everybody was talking about. But you just do it with, you know, with such, and I guess the word is authenticity and integrity. Um, and I, that's what I, that's what I want. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm working for, look, working to get. And not grieving keeps you from getting it. Mm. It keeps you from really, uh, really, really wise action. Nancy, I wonder if you uh, want to talk about those questions that you were bringing up, going back to the subject matter mm -hmm. around differences. Uh, you brought up uh, seven questions. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, um, uh, the, the question, you know, who am I here? There are other uh, ethnic groups in oh. that have been in the circle, but so you're really on the spot today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what which questions you have. about race and class. Remember how you brought up the the, the seven questions, the seven lessons, that one? No, I okay. mean the the subject matter of. Oh, the race and class talks about. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I was saying that we were kind of wanting people to engage around the seven questions, seven lessons. Okay. But it seems like you're thinking of something else. Talk about what what it means to be a white woman in the in this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, if oh. this feels like a lot of pressure. Yeah. 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 Here we go. If this feels like a lot of pressure, it should. Yeah, it was, it, it's been, um, there are times when I didn't really feel like I belonged to be in the group because um, I, well, for one thing, we're talking about um, history that, um, oh, in, in like a, a situation where like segregation of the schools and, and, and also the lack of quality public education 
um, for everyone. <laughs> I mean, some people have, have it, but not everyone, and especially in the communities of color, there isn't. I mean, there are some schools, but right. it, it feels like generally that resources have not been put to those schools, and, and there's other dynamics that play into it. So, um, in talking about those things, it sometimes feels like I don't really have a, um, a place to talk about. It, it felt like, um, yeah, just like I don't know what I can bring to that. Mm -hmm. and, and yet, I also, like hearing the conversations yesterday, there was at one point somebody was talking, I can't remember which conversation it was, but the importance of having a dialogue. Um, oh, I think it was when you were talking about sugar. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The differences and... and Different stories yeah, that need to be yeah. told. Joni brought out that it was different for black people yeah. uh, mm -hmm. having diabetes mm -hmm. because the social and cultural... Okay. Mm -hmm. And but also the... Um, we're different. No, I think it was, no, it was, I'm sorry, it was a conversation with the, um, with Cindy. Yeah, yeah, with Cindy, where Cindy was telling her, how she was telling her story, and how that, um, that's what it was. Um, so, um, yeah, so both you and Donna really worked with me to be, to find my own truth, and to speak my own truth. That was an important piece. I, something I keep working on and, and trying to figure out what's my role with working for quality public education. Yeah. Yeah. Could you say something? Mm -hmm. it's, it's also interesting to think. I have, um, well, we really do love each other, this, this group. It's, it's, it's really a wonderful. Um, place to be, and it's always food, too. We <laughs> always <laughs> bring this. Uh, but, um, uh, but also with Nancy, uh, that I, I, I'm reminded about the, 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 the ways we've been reminded about listening and breathing. And uh, uh, the, my, my deep regard and respect for Nancy's work in a variety of different community settings um, um, makes me sort of can sometimes capture my energy and sort of say, but Nancy, you're doing this, and you're doing this, and you're doing this, you know, just get over that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 but I, so I'm, I'm sort of publicly reminding myself to sit mm -hmm. and listen to myself about why I want to get her to get over it. <laughs> um, so I guess it's, it's the opportunity to practice. It's the opportunity to try to, to create spaces where people have opportunities to practice that. So, um, <coughs> so I, I'm not leaping into to say that because she's doing some wonderful work and to see a serious business about it. Um, but, but that's, but we all, the space that's been created gives us ways of giving ourselves permission to practice. And because of the worlds of people, the different worlds of people that I've been in contact um, with, with whom I've been in contact, I keep thinking that a lot of work is being done in terms of finding ways to to talk to each other and break these barriers. But I'm beginning to think, especially with the election and so forth, that I may live in a special bubble. <laughs> um, everyone up here, uh, and you know, each of you and, and all the rest who, who have worked with us are all day, every day, activists. Mm -hmm. 
in this community. Nancy does, I don't know how many <laughs> committees and, and working Black Lives Matter and, mm -hmm. and, and, and all kinds of youth that she brought in and the more youthful members. And uh, Donna, of course, <coughs> this is her work. Mm -hmm. And Paula, in an educational level, this is her work. So these are the folks I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and all of you mm -hmm. do this kind of work. And I think, isn't this the world? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they're in the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the bubble. Rob, are you ready to maybe, does any, are you ready to open it? Open? Yes, yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Would you mind, and forgive my ignorance, but could somebody just briefly describe exactly what the project is? Like, have you been interviewing people around Boston? Like, how many people have been involved? Like, <laughs> like you know, I'm sorry. What, what is this? So, <laughs> will take a cookie or you'll be there. Well, uh, yeah, it started out. Um, it's, it started out as a project to figure out why in quotes, busing kept coming up mm -hmm. as we were trying to get black parents more involved. As you were men, you were you, you and minority neighbors, was trying to get black people more involved in public schools. And a lot of those people that they met were around um, <laughs> party reform for, that involved everybody, but a lot of people traced things back to that started with their distress around the, the mass incarceration system to that time. And so a lot of the people that, for, that we first talked to had been directly impacted. We did a little film called uh, Can We Talk? It was a big film called Can We Talk? And then, um, and then we, we used that film to ask people, is it important to go back? Well, first we asked, is it important to go back to that history? And they said yes. Paula said we should say this to the guy. She, they said yes, and so we said, um, and it was all, it was all inquiry, right? The, the structure was inquiry, so they said yes, if you connect it to what's happening today. Don't just go back like it's a history lesson, you have to connect it to what's happening today. So we did that, and then we, we said what, then we used the film to ask the question, how, how is it related to what's ha happening today? And so people mentioned three things that we first focus on, um, race, and, um, race, and race and class equity, yeah. like excellence and, and access. And, access. Yeah. and so then we used, then Robbie brought the story circles to go to places and ask people, and have a story circle where people would talk about it. We used a lot of different prompts, but basically it was a story circle model. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, 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 we tried, and I don't know quite where we are with it, but we, we need to talk about that, um, to, do, to then do a curriculum around race and class literacy in education. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're, we're sort of um, in limbo about that, um, but uh, we, we talked to, hundreds of people in different settings, either interviews or story circles or the talk about later. Um, you know, so using the, the um, we came up with three reports and using those reports. So, um, you yeah. know, archives. That we archive the stories. Right, yeah. we're archiving the stories with the Northeastern. And, and also one other thing is that the, 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 the reports you talked about, the um, unfinished business, seven questions and seven lessons. Right. And I want to underscore the questions part because when, we, when we, we had a press conference about rolling out this report, it was really sent, it was designed to be something that could be very accessible and used by a lot of people. The, the Globe reported, yes, they've got seven an seven questions and seven answers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like ah. it's just it just you know just you know no, they don't get that part yet. You know, we, we 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 actively wanted to to um, affirm the value of it being open to questions and further questions. So, but that and and then some people we started to design some workshops around the use of that document. Um,
going back to some of the community groups and some churches and so forth to try to, uh, to see the, the, what would happen when people engaged in those questions and lessons. Sandy? So. Yeah. Um, Deborah? Um, Robbie, I know that you did a, a series on pieces there, one in Mississippi, one in Buffalo, and then one in Boston. And but I saw the one in Buffalo, which was about the, the race riots that had happened there that nobody wanted to talk about. And you had actors interviewing people to try and get information. Right. And then I think the one in, in here in Boston, you did the sister with Boston yeah. and right. turned into a theater piece. Right. 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 So then this project really is sort of a follow-up to that and not it, about making a the theater piece, but just it's, using uh, using the story circle format in order to talk about the community mm -hmm. history and, and charge issues. I mean, that would be the language I'd use. Um, and, you know, each place has been a little different. And in fact, there's an article um, that Marie Chieri, who produced that project called Primary Sources, um, there's an article on what we would call a process mm -hmm. for doing that work. Um, and so, you know, we got in there, started doing something, and defining it as we went. Mm -hmm. and, and found some markers to guide us. But each time it was different. Well, and to talk about, mm. um, call it that, because the process for us became a way to talk about things that were hard to talk about. Mm. And here this is the first time I thought about, and we came to it together, uh, I began to think of the talk about as a form of theater mm -hmm. that <coughs> literally tears down mm -hmm. the wall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll take two more. Deborah and David. A whole bunch of questions. <laughs> um, one is just, what's next? Are you, are you that are going to be in Boston thinking of another version of this project, or are you content uh, is it being archived and this is in the past? Well, it's, it's not, there's no product. Right, right. No, there, I know that. There's I mean, just is there another inquiry plan or not? Yeah, I mean, we're, yeah. we don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's tied yeah. to the, how we evolve. And yeah. We've changed, the, 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 you know, I think it is like theater, and, or how I've come to understand it from, from Robbie. It's like, We've been changed mm -hmm. as actors mm -hmm. in the project, mm -hmm. yeah. and we mm -hmm. and so who we were yeah. when we started isn't who we were, who we are now, yeah. and so I think we're you know and and we've had this this parting with Robbie leaving, and so you know we have to to look again. I think we're in that part of the grief process mm -hmm. where something new starts to emerge. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really going through it, and, and we're, we're going to, you know, that's the good part about it, right? Mm -hmm. Something has to yeah. die, right, David? Yeah. And it is, and I just want to point out one of the best experiences that I had with Robbie is going, we went to David's um, uh, workshop called uh, Love Driven Politics. <laughs> and um, that was transform transformational. And I think that's really what, what Robbie brings to the to the work. It's very love driven. She's and she's mm -hmm. you know sometimes it's tough love, but mostly it's a very, <laughs> it's a very um a, a very you know it's 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 just loving. She's just really a loving person. Mm. And that's what trans that's what brings transformation quicker to me, whether it's on the death side and dying or on the birth side and birthing. You know, you have to know that you're loved. And uh, to me that's Robbie. Mm. Yeah. Mm. David? <coughs> uh, I'll just say briefly that um, you know, Marshall and I were chatting before.
for your session about the experience of isolation and how, how so many folks feel so isolated. Mm -hmm. And then I hear through the practice of your storytelling and the community making transformation. You know, that all, all of us were feeling dispersed like a diaspora. You know, get called home. Uh, so that, you know, when you call a community together, you're calling people home. Mm -hmm. It's that transformation. So you don't have to be an exile. Um, and you don't have to normalize exile. That home can be ours. Yeah. Right, home can be ours. And then, you know, the power of Robbie's it's theater, the power of her work, you know, is that message. And it's not just her message, but it's a message that she empowers all of us mm -hmm. to speak. So I want to thank you. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Woo. Thank you. <laughs> Seven minutes with